As the world moves on from the COVID-19 pandemic, many of us are eager to travel again. But if you've tried to book a plane ticket recently, you'll have noticed that prices are much higher than they were before the pandemic. Take a look at these round-trip economy fares from Hong Kong to these three destinations before COVID, and take a look at them now. The airfares now from Hong Kong to most of the destinations are between 10% to 50% more than 2019. The global airfares now is 6 to 12% higher compared to 2019. Industry experts say prices are not likely to drop anytime soon. So as the world returns to a new normal in the wake of the pandemic, why are airfares still so high? One of the main reasons, according to travel agents and airlines, is that supply just can't keep up with demand. It was the opposite problem at the start of the pandemic, when passenger demand for air travel all but dried up, as governments closed borders and people were advised, or even ordered, to stay home. That resulted in airlines having to park thousands of planes that sat idle for two or three years. Now the airlines can't get these planes back into service fast enough. They still need to do a lot of checks that are required by the regulators because it's been parked for several years during COVID. And so in order to move it up again, they, they'll need to inspect various things. And the inspection takes many, many, many hours. Uh, it's very painstaking because you know safety is paramount in this industry. So they will have to, to go through a very thorough process of you know, software, hardware, and even things that you can't see, whether they are insects or hidden animals inside the aircraft, which, which had happened before um, when snakes or some other insects sneak into, into an aircraft. So they don't want that for sure. So they will have to do a 100% thorough cleansing, cleaning of the aircraft and then make, ensure that all the components are still working and, and they will have a, a dry run before they take it uh, back home. And that uh, is a process that is going to take uh, many, many weeks and even months before a single park aircraft can be, can be flown again. The elevated airfares have allowed airlines to recoup losses incurred during the pandemic. And so far, people have been willing to pay. Collectively, airlines were stung by nearly 200 billion US dollars in losses because of COVID, and tens of millions of jobs were cut. In 2023, the airline industry's lobby group estimates carriers will post a global net profit of 9.8 billion US dollars. That's more than double the forecast made last December. The International Air Transport Association expects some 4.35 billion passengers will travel during the year, or around 96% of 2019 levels. But as travel recovers, the industry is struggling with another challenge, hiring enough staff. Many workers laid off during the pandemic have since changed careers, leaving the industry with an uncertain future. So when aviation recovered, I think they had no intention of going back because there's no saying that this cannot or will not happen again. So there's always that uncertainty that the aviation industry faces, which is very exposed to a lot of external factors beyond its control. There's no longer that attraction, there's no longer that, that, that significance or the, the romance involved with air travel like it did before. So it's just become another job opportunity. In particular, airlines cannot hire pilots fast enough. In the US alone, the four main carriers are trying to hire some 8,000 pilots this year. Here in Hong Kong, Cathay Pacific is also dealing with a shortfall of experienced pilots as it looks to build back capacity. Typically, pilots are the next big cost center for any given airline, especially for a very a big airline and very established airline like Cathay, like Singapore, where quality is of utmost importance to them. So they, they are very selective about who they hire as pilots, even first officers or even cadet pilots. So they have very specific qualities that they look out for. And this obviously 
will not come unless they are willing to pay for them. Cabin crew also need a lot of training. You want cabin crew that are of a certain standard. Cathay wants people to be able to speak Mandarin from now on, for example. I mean, you know, you can't have that overnight. You have to train people to do that. It costs money to do that. So these are investments that airline will need to recoup because the airlines have to make a living and airlines cannot make a living unless they make, uh, they break even. There's no point in flying if they don't break even. It's not just that. Fuel prices are also making it more expensive to fly. Although they have cooled off over the past year, crude oil is still 50% higher than at the start of 2019. Fuel is the single largest operational cost for airlines, accounting for between 30 and 60% in an average year. Geopolitics is also playing a role in fair price rises. After flight bans were imposed on Russia in response to its invasion of Ukraine in 2022, Moscow retaliated by closing its airspace to countries it considered hostile. That means flights between East and West are having to fly longer distances to avoid entering Russian airspace, burning up more fuel, using more resources, which in turn raises the price of tickets. For instance, a flight from Hong Kong to London on Cathay Pacific used to take around 12 hours. But the route to get around Russian airspace has added around two hours to that journey, taking a total of 14 hours. Russia's war in Ukraine and the sanctions related to it have also driven up the cost of plane parts for manufacturers like Airbus, Boeing and their suppliers who are having more difficulty sourcing raw materials like titanium. What I'm most concerned about is geopolitical instability. I mean, I, I think airlines will be able to overcome financial difficulties as they have shown before. It's a very resilient industry and airlines are very resilient, uh, but war is something else. And there's more. Delays in delivering new aircraft and aircraft parts, including engines, are also having an impact. Michael O'Leary, CEO of Europe's biggest airline, Ryanair, recently said, over the medium term, the inability of Airbus and Boeing to deliver any meaningful increase in production means capacity is going to continue to be challenging for the next two, three, five years. Yet another reason for high airfares is China's slow reopening to the world. The country had some of the world's toughest pandemic measures and kept them in place much longer than many other countries. Although domestic travel has exceeded pre-pandemic levels, a recent survey found more than 30% of mainland Chinese travelers don't plan on traveling internationally in 2023. The Association of Asia Pacific Airlines says it will take at least a year for China to get back to pre-pandemic levels for overseas air travel. Chinese carriers are also having difficulty restoring runway slots at airports overseas after three years of essentially being closed off, as well as a shortage of ground handling staff at airports at home and overseas. The war in Ukraine is also having an impact on restoring international flights to and from China, as US and European carriers have to fly longer distances to China. The number of flights between China and the United States remains at just 6% of 2019 levels amid tensions between the two sides. And if you're hoping to redeem all the airline points and miles you've accumulated from credit card spending during the pandemic, well, good luck finding an available seat. For Hong Kong people to redeem uh, the tickets from Asia Mall is would be very hard because the planes are already full, so they would have less inventory for redemption. However, if you book, you know, like uh, last minute, you may have a chance, better chance uh, to redeem. So what can you do to get the best deal? Travel agents say the key is to plan as far ahead as possible. My advice to travelers to get good deals is to book early 
and also to be flexible on the dates. Uh, for example, uh, you know, like you, you want to go on July 1st, then you have to consider whether you are okay to travel on July 1st or you are okay to travel on the second week. That will give you more, you know, like chances to get good deals and also be uh, flexible also on your destination. Like for example, if they are considering to go to Japan, maybe also consider going to Korea or uh, you know, like Taiwan. And if deals is good, then go to that destination. Don't just stick to one destination and not be able to be flexible. And just how long will it take before airfares become competitive again? Well, experts say it depends on when supply increases and airlines can return to levels of staff and aircraft they had before the pandemic. But that will take some time. Hong Kong's home carrier, Cathay Pacific, for example, isn't expected to offer cheaper fares until the end of 2024, when it hopes capacity will have returned to pre-pandemic levels. With fears of a recession, higher interest rates to fight inflation, the question is, will people keep shelling out for travel plans? For now, it looks like it.